Whenever I open up Cavalry and start working on a project, I always end up with a smile on my face. I absolutely love how the program works and how easy it is to get into, especially if you have some experience with programs like Cinema 4D. It's really easy to create complex looking animations out of really simple setups, like this one here. So let's dive in and let's see how we can go about recreating this effect. Let's go! The first thing we'll need is a reference. We have to find a font that will give us this cursive look, as if everything was written in one continuous stroke. I use a font manager, which speeds up the selection process, but if you don't have something like that, just go through your fonts one by one and see if you have one that matches that look. The app I'm using is called Typeface. I can type in a word and I immediately get a preview back. That way, I can quickly see how the letters interact with each other. There are a lot of good choices here. Brush Script, for example, looks great, but I went with the homemade Apple regular font. Either way, the font choice doesn't matter that much. We're not really going to use it in our animation. So with a font at hand, I went ahead and created a simple composition in Illustrator and then I exported that as a JPEG. Then it's just a matter of dragging and dropping that image into Cavalry. Just as a note, we don't need Illustrator for all that. I just use Illustrator day in and day out, so it's my default app for everything. You can certainly do all that inside Cavalry. So let's see how we can approach the animation. Our first thought might be to use the pen tool to trace the text and then have that path animated. This is definitely in the right direction, but if we approach it that way, we will have a hard time getting the lively animation we're going for. But let's see what the issue is up close. Let me quickly trace through some of the letters. Perfect. The way we would animate this path is by checking the trimming option and then animating the end value. At frame 0, it's 0, and then around frame 20, it's at 100%. Let's play back the animation. And it looks about right. So far, so good. Now, here's where our problems begin. If we click on the Animate Path button, we now have the ability to move the points around, which is great, but if we start animating the path, we only have a couple of frames to work with for each little bounce. And even if we somehow manage to make it all work, we will end up with so many keyframes in such a tight area. So it's going to be incredibly difficult to move stuff around and art direct everything. What we want to do is build the animation in layers, so we not only have fine control on every single element, but we also have the ability to retime any part without really affecting anything else in the timeline. So the magic tool to do all that is called Points to Path. Let's create a new scene and let's bring in the Points to Path shape. It's a simple line that's made out of four points. We have the coordinates for each point here, and we also have the ability to add more points by clicking the Add button. And since each of these points is a separate parameter, we can drive them with whatever other shape or shader we want. And we will do that with nulls. So let's add one to the timeline. And let's move it a little bit farther from the line so it's easier to see what will happen. Now we can connect the position of the null to the position of the first point of the line. And as you can see, the line jumps to where the null is located. So if we move the null, the line moves along with it. Let's add three more nulls, and let's connect them to all the other points. Notice now how easy it is to get all kinds of shapes just by moving them around. And most importantly, we have all the flexibility we might want because each control point has its own track. That way, we can easily layer our animation and get some nice movement out of it. So let's keyframe the position for Null 2. And let's do the same for Null 3. If we press play, the animation looks very stiff. And that's because everything happens in a linear fashion. If we go to the graph editor, everything is a straight line. 
We could go in and add Bezier curves and move the curves around, but there's an even better way to do that. We'll use another one of Cavalry's features, which is called Magic Easing. So, let's go back to the time editor and let's play back the animation once more just as a refresher. Now, let's select the first set of keyframes and right click. And in the Magic Easing menu, we have a lot of different options to choose from. Let's go with the Spring Out option. And let's do the same for the set of keyframes for the other null. Magic Easing doesn't do anything special, it just creates all the nice curves we want without us having to go in and adjust everything, and most importantly, without having to deal with a crazy amount of keyframes. If we go back to the graph editor, notice how the animation looks. We created all this complexity, but with just two keyframes. That is incredibly powerful. Now, let's play back the animation to see what we've done. It doesn't look good, but that's because the effect doesn't have a lot of time to work with. Everything happens way too fast. If we move the end keyframes for each null a little bit further, and now hit playback, we will immediately see the difference. We have this great looking bouncing effects with just two keyframes. And since each movement is essentially in its own layer, we can adjust the timing for each movement with ease. We can get all sorts of results just by adjusting the end keyframe of each layer. I could spend a lot of time just moving the keyframes around and seeing the different effect it has on the animation, but let's move on. So we currently have everything we need to build the text animation. We will control the path with a points to path shape and several nulls. And we will add complexity to the animation with magic easing. So let's start building the text shape. Let's bring in the points to path shape and let's add some nulls. Since we have a lot of area to cover, we're going to use several of them. But of course, this can be overwhelming to control later on, so we need to be a little bit conservative. We should use as few nulls as possible, just enough to describe the shape. Similar to how we would approach a Bezier path when tracing an object. Too few points and the shape is going to look bad, too many and it's going to be difficult to edit. For the end letter, I would say we need around 6 nulls. Each one of them will be approximately at the end of each corner, but we don't have to be precise, at least for the time being. We will adjust things once we connect them to the spline. Our path shape currently has 4 points, so let's add 2 more for a total of 6. And let's start connecting. It's nothing special, we've done this before, we just connect the position of each null to the position of the line's points. And now, it's just a matter of moving the points around until we get the letter's shape. Okay, it looks like we can't really get exactly the shape we want with just 6 points, so we will probably need to add a couple more. Let's shuffle things around and let's see how many more we need. And it looks like it's just one more, so let's add one more point to the path shape and one more null. And let's connect the two. And we're all set. The end letter is done. This is basically how we will approach the rest of the text. We will keep adding points to the path and connecting these points to the nulls. And here's where we need to start getting a little bit organized. We should start naming things so we can more easily understand what's going on later on. The path is for the text, so we should give it an appropriate name. And these nulls are for the letter N. So I will put an N in front of each null, and I will also move them inside a group folder. And of course, let's name that folder too. Perfect. We should follow the same procedure for the rest of the setup. Let's now fast forward to the already prepared scene. I know it looks scary, but <laughs> I promise you it's nothing special. If you kept things organized, it's not going to be an issue at all. I'll disable everything and let's see the elements one at a time. Here we have the letter N, here we have the letter E, and so on and so forth. As you can see, it's really easy to declutter everything and only concentrate on the element we have to animate. The path for the neat text has in total 23 points. I created another path for the horizontal part of the letter T. 
that one has just three points. And then we have the exclamation point. This one is made out of two paths. One for the period, which is made out of four points, and one for the vertical line. This one is made out of three points. Okay, so now that we have the paths all set up, we can continue with the fun part, the animation. We will first block out the overall timing of the animation, and then we will add all the micro movements. So let's go to the path of the text, pick stroke, enable trim, and now we can animate the end attribute. One keyframe at the beginning and one keyframe at the end. We need to repeat the same thing for all the other paths. But before we fast forward to the next step, let's finalize the look of the text a little bit. We need to increase the stroke and we also need to round the caps. And for the color, we're going to use a gradient shader. So right click, add gradient, and pick whatever colors you want. I went with more purplish tones. And now let's fast forward to the final look of the scene. The basic animation is laid out. It's just two keyframes for each of the four paths we have on the scene. Let's now disable all the unnecessary elements and let's focus on the N letter. So here we want the null to overshoot to give this dramatic hand-drawn look and then have it move to its final location. So let's select this null, keyframe the final position, and then move in an earlier part of the timeline and let's move it upwards. Perfect. To bring some life to the animation, we need to add some easing. So let's select the first keyframe and let's go with spring out. Now let's hit playback. And okay, we need to adjust things a little bit. And now we're ready to move to the next point. We basically need to repeat this effect for a lot of the other nulls. As the line moves very fast around the text, it overshoots and then goes back to normal. So around this point, this null will overshoot as well. And if we hit playback, we now have this jello effect slowly building up. And if we increase the length of each set of keyframes, we can get an even bouncier look. This is the part where you have to adjust things to your liking. As you can see in the final animation, the movements of all the nulls somewhat overlap. So even when we're much further down the line, we still have elements trying to get to their final spot. Also notice that some of the nulls don't even have animations. By keeping some of them still, we give the text a more rigid look, as if it has some mass to it. But of course, this is a personal preference, so feel free to adjust things however you like. And that is it, really. As you can see, we didn't do anything too complex. It's a really simple setup, but at the same time, it can produce some cool looking results. This is what I love about Cavalry. It's easy to learn, and at the same time, it has all the tools needed to create incredible looking animations. We can combine things in all sorts of ways, and we can create complexity out of very simple elements. Anyway, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and I'll do my best to answer them. Take care, and I'll see you on the next one.